So here we have our cam part, and the machining of the outside contour is defined, and the eye machining toolpath simulated. The next thing we should do is define the machining of the center pocket. We'll first define an eye rough operation to perform the roughing, and then from there, we'll copy the operation and define the finishing by simply choosing eye finish for the technology type. For the third step, we'll begin by adding an eye machining operation to perform the roughing of the center pocket. In the Solid Cam Manager, right-click Operations, Add Milling Operation, and select 2D Eye Machining. The Eye Machining Operation dialog box is displayed and, of course, the default eye rough should be used for technology. To start the geometry definition, go ahead and click the New button. For this operation, the geometry is defined as a closed pocket. In the SOLIDWORKS graphics area, pick on the lower contour of the pocket. To close the chain, let's select Auto Constant Z and then click Yes to accept the chain selection. To confirm the geometry selection and exit the Geometry Edit dialog box, click OK. Next, we have to move down to the tool page where we can choose the tool we'd like to use for the operation. Click the Select button and choose the 9mm end mill from the Part Tool table. To confirm the tool definition, click the Select button. Let's now move down to the Levels page to define the upper and lower milling levels for the operation. First click the Upper Level button, and again pick on the top face of the stock model. Then click OK to accept the selection. Next. Click the Pocket Depth button. This time, pick on the bottom face of the closed pocket to define the machining depth. Again, click OK to accept the selection. Now, for this operation, we'll also use the default cutting conditions generated by the Technology Wizard based on a machining level aggressiveness of 3. The default technological parameters are mostly used. On the Technology page, We'll leave the wall island offset at 0.24 millimeters like we did previously. Now, in the morphing spiral controls area, move the efficiency slider down to 1. This will inform eye machining not to limit the morphing. And based on the shape of the pocket we're cutting, the more morphing, the better. In most cases, though, you probably won't need to adjust the default efficiency setting of 6. Now, let's move down to the link page. Since we're dealing with a closed pocket in this operation, these helical entry settings will affect the calculated toolpath. The ramping angle parameter is automatically set according to the machining level aggressiveness. This value means that the helical entry into the pocket will be performed at a ramping angle of 3.4 degrees. Finally, let's finish up the operation definition by naming it iRough Center Pocket. Go ahead and click Save and Calculate to add this operation to the cam tree and calculate the eye machining toolpath. Then, we should simulate the toolpath. So, click the Simulate button to start the simulation. Using the default HostCAD mode, click the Play button. And you can adjust the simulation speed however you like. We should see the tool perform the helical entry into the pocket, followed by a morphing spiral to the outer walls. After using trochoidal-like cuts to clear the corners, the pocket roughing toolpath comes to an end. With that said, let's close the simulation control panel with the exit button. Now, we'll want to create a finishing operation with most, if not all, of the settings from our current roughing operation. To do that, again, click the Save and Copy button. Now, a copy of the iRough operation we just defined automatically opens. In order to perform the finishing of the center pocket, we first have to, of course, define an eye finish operation. So, simply choose eye finish for the technology. We'll use the copy geometry, tool, and milling levels definitions from the previous eye rough operation. And based on a machining level aggressiveness of 3, we'll also use the default cutting conditions that were generated by the technology wizard. Now, I want you to switch to the technology page. Under the Technology tab, we can see again that the Wall Island Offset value is now set to zero and is locked from being changed. Under the IRS Data tab, 
The IRUF center pocket operation is selected as the parent operation, and the values needed for calculating rest material are automatically entered into the appropriate fields. To end the operation definition, let's name this one I finish center pocket. Click Save and Calculate, and then click Simulate. After the simulation control panel opens, set your desired speed and click the play button to start the simulation. You'll see that the tool first finishes the corners and then a final pass is taken along the walls. We can now close the simulation control panel and the iMachining Operation dialog box with the exit buttons. So that concludes step three, where we've just defined the rough and finished machining of the center pocket using the iMachining technology. In the next step, I'll show you how to quickly and easily define the rough and finished machining of the pocket ledge.